Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kyla and today we're gonna play a little smash or pass. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me in some popular books that you see floating around all of the time. And if you're not following me on Instagram, my handle is just Kyla Natalie, like everything else. It will also be linked below. You should definitely follow me there. I asked you guys to send me books that you literally see everywhere, whether that's on BookTok, BookTube, Bookstagram, whatever. They can be the most popular or just ones you see talked about all the time. It didn't matter if I had read it or not. And today we're gonna go through the list and I'm gonna tell you whether I would smash that or whether I would pass on that. I have seen so many different versions of this going around social media, book talk in general, so I thought it'd be fun to turn it into a video. So if you're excited, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and dive in. So I have my phone here. We are going to get to these suggestions. You guys came through with the suggestions, so Thank you so much. And again, if you're not following me, hello, please do. Um, okay, so let's start with the first one is from my friend Roxy. And she said the seven lives of Evelyn Hugo, which I have right behind me somewhere, but I'm not going to hold up every book for this because that would just take forever. But definitely smash. I freaking loved that book so much. I thought it was so fun. It is very popular, super hyped, but it is definitely worth the hype. It reads like a mystery thriller because there's this underlying reason why this reporter is called to report on Evelyn Hugo and like tell her story, but you don't know why. So on top of the story of Evelyn Hugo, which is incredible and getting to see that and how that is unfolding it, it's so much more than you think it is. It's not just like your typical celebrity story. You also have this underlying mystery going going on and it's just so fun and when the reveal happens you're like oh damn <laughs> so definitely smash the next one let's see okay also from roxy is people you meet on vacation and i'm gonna have to go ahead and pass on this and i might get some hate on that um you got i just have to say it Romance is not really my thing. I don't mind if it's sprinkled into other stories, but I don't read a lot of romance on its own. I just, it's just not my genre. Um, so you might hear that a few times throughout this video, but yeah, I just have no desire to read that whatsoever. Also, I hate the cover. I know people love it, but that orange, I just like, and I love the color orange, but something about that cover, it's just not it for me. So one, I wouldn't be attracted to the cover and two, I'm not really a romance gal. So definitely pass. And the last suggestion from Roxy was book lovers. And again, this one intrigues me a little bit more, but I'm definitely gonna pass. Um, I, it intrigues me because I do enjoy stories that are set in like bookstores or have to do with authors or things like that. I do enjoy that trope, but again, I just have zero desire, zero desire to read any sort of romance. So I might be doing myself a disservice there. I know Emily Henry is so hyped up. I see it everywhere, just like you guys. I do like this cover a bit more, but definitely pass. All right, so what do we have next? Um, ooh, this one is a good one. This one is from Grace, and she said, where the crawdads sing. This one? Oh man, if I could like pin myself right in the middle, I would, but I'm gonna say smash. I read this, I really enjoyed it. I definitely think it's overhyped so that when you go into it and you read it, it can be for some people a bit of a letdown because I just think that it is so hyped up 
With that being said, I do think the story is incredible. I really enjoyed the mystery element throughout it. I really loved seeing her throughout her entire story from when she was younger and her past and what she's going through now and now that she's being accused of this murder. I really enjoy so many aspects of that story plus the atmosphere in that book is amazing the north carolina setting and the marsh is so prevalent it's like a main character in itself so i really enjoy that i'm a big atmosphere person i really like when that is extremely present so i really enjoyed it and then the ending oh the ending oh, so good so i'm gonna say smash However, I do think that it is extremely overhyped and for that reason, I think that some people will not enjoy it. This next one is also from Grace and it is Daisy Jones and the Six. I have read this one. I enjoyed it. So I'm gonna say smash. I love a good musician story. And while I don't necessarily enjoy romance, like I said, this one was kind of woven throughout the story and there were so many layers to it that it didn't necessarily make it like the main focus. I really enjoyed the story of the band and how they came together and her story. And I really liked how there was almost like a mystery element to it. But my favorite thing, and this is, I know not how everyone experienced it, but I do think if you're going to read this book, you should experience the audiobook because the audiobook has an entire cast of characters. So you're not just getting one voice. Every single person in that book has a voice and it is so much more enjoyable. I've seen people review this book and say it was so boring. There wasn't a whole lot to the story and that kind of thing. And like, I get it, but I think that if you experience the audiobook, it's a completely different experience. And so I highly suggest that. So I'm gonna say smash on Daisy Jones and the Six, but the audio version. And if you have read the book, I maybe suggest revisiting it and listening to the audio. I'm telling you, it, you I feel like you will fall in love with this story after listening to it. Grace came through with the suggestions, so thank you, Grace. The next one that she suggested was Hidden Pictures, which I have not read this one yet, but it is on my list, so I'm definitely gonna say smash. This is totally up my alley. I love a good thriller, mystery, horror. It is definitely my genre. I love it, and this one, although I also have seen it everywhere and I'm a little bit nervous that it is overhyped. It has been loved by so many people that I follow that I'm like trusting them in their reviews. So definitely smash on hidden pictures. I'm interested but I feel like right now is not the time of year for it. I don't know maybe I'm wrong. I feel like I get summer vibes from the cover but maybe it is a good fall read. So definitely let me know in the comments one if you've read it and also, like, what's the time of year to experience it? Is it now? Should I wait until summer? Tell me all of the things. And then the last suggestion that she had was actually an author, which I'm not sure I have ever heard of before, which is Shari Lapina. So let's go to Goodreads right now and type in Shari Lapina and see what oh okay the couple next door not a happy family um an unwanted guest okay this one is going to be a little bit more difficult i'm gonna say pass Ooh, that's a tough one okay i'm gonna say pass i'm going with my gut mainly because the first one i see on here is the couple next door and my biggest pet peeve in thrillers or a trope that I like stay away from is thrillers having to do with couples. Now I don't mind if it's family, so not a happy family. That one could be a little bit different. So, but if we're saying like overall, it seems like, oh man, this is so hard. I don't wanna like count out an author. Do I change my answer? <gasps> Oh, Grace, what are you doing to me? Um, okay, I'm gonna change my answer, actually. 
plot twist, I'm gonna say smash. However, I'm gonna hard pass on the couple next door. So maybe I might check out Not A Happy Family, A Stranger In The House, An Unwanted Guest, but definitely hard pass on the couple next door. I just hate thrillers, horrors, whatever, that deal with couples. I just feel like it's the same thing all the time and like, I don't care. Don't care, so I'm not gonna read a book like that, but I think it's rude to count out an author completely without even having read from them before. So, okay, changing my answer. Smash on Shari Lapina. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry if I'm not but pass on the couple next door. Oh, I totally lied. We have one more suggestion from Grace and that was Unmissing by Minka Kent. Again, never heard of it. So let's go to Goodreads and see what we come up with here. Why can't I type Unmissing? Minka Kent, there we go. Cover impressions don't like it whatsoever does have a 4.06 rating on goodreads though which is a good sign so a return from the past knocks a family dangerously off balance in a novel of spiraling suspense let's see merrick cleto and her husband luca have a Mm, we're already starting with a couple here. Have the life they dreamed of, a coastal home, a promising future, a growing family. That dream ends with a late night knock on the door. Weak, broken, and emaciated, it's Luca's first wife, Lydia, missing for 10 years, presumed dead. Okay, well, you have me intrigued there, though, because I do like a missing person kind of situation, so... Let's see. She has quite the story, her kidnapping, torturous confinement, ooh, that's horrible, and finally an escape. So I do like that aspect of this. So I'm gonna say Smash. It's something that could interest me. I do hate the cover. Horrible. Maybe there's another sort of cover there going on. So, okay, I'm gonna say Smash on this one. I don't enjoy a husband and wife thriller, but you have the twist of a missing person with a crazy story. So I'm gonna say Smash on this one. And I've never heard of this author before, I don't think. Let's see. Never heard of any of these books. So thank you, Grace. New author suggestion to check out and also a new book suggestion. So smash on the unmissing. All right, the next one that we have was submitted by a bunch of people and it's too many for me <laughs> to list off, but it's Akatar, the series, A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I don't think I even need to say this out loud, but smash, hardcore smash. Reese, excuse me. Excuse me, need I say more? Um, uh, oh my god, I, like, where do I even begin? Where do I even begin? My head is spiraling. Um, absolutely. Is it worth the hype? Absolutely. It is world building. It is character driven. There is a love story for people who love that. And it's not complicated fantasy. And that was the thing that really held me back from reading it for a long time is that sometimes with fantasy, the world building the magic system can be a bit confusing. This one, it's not whatsoever. You do have the world building, but it's divvied up in a way that is so easy to understand it's done by seasons which is really cool and then like light and dark and whatever so like it's so easy to understand there is also a map in the book so in case you're wondering like where things are they give you a freaking map which is amazing um but also the characters the characters i love it because the first one hooks you in with this like the drama that happens at first where she's being whisked away into this world and then you have a love story unfolding and then, I mean, I'm not gonna give anything away, but then like chaos, straight chaos ensues. And then the second book just shatters everything that you loved about the first one into a million pieces, but in the best way possible. And then there's even more love, maybe in my opinion, too much love. I know everyone has their opinion, but like I said, I'm not really like a romance gal. So like, 
with being said, I'm only up to book three, but book three I think is my favorite so far, which is A Court of Wings and Ruin, because this had everything. It had the love story, it also had the family building story, it also had war, and uh, just drama around the different realms, and it was just everything that you want in a fantasy in one book. So. I definitely think this one's my favorite. They're not standalone, so, so you do have to read them all. And like, yes, they are thick, but they are so worth it. So 100% smash. I could not recommend this series enough. And especially if you're not a fantasy reader, but you want to get into fantasy, absolutely, this is an incredible place to start. Like I said, I know some of them are thick and intimidating, but they read so freaking fast. So absolutely smash, 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 smash. Oh my god, my feet! The next suggestion is from Allie Cotter, and she put down The Secret Life of Addie LaRue. <sighs> Girl. <laughs> smash. 100% smash. This is probably my favorite book of all time. It's still one that I think about on the daily. It is so gorgeous. It is a slow burn though. So you have to get through the first like third of the book, which is a little bit like, okay, what's going on? What kind, like the writing's a little bit different and set way back in the day. And so you're kind of having to deal with like the dialect of that and her story and you know, everything that happens. But once you get past the first like third, it is so fast paced and you just cannot look away. The writing is gorgeous. The story itself is gorgeous. There is a bit of a romance. There's also weirdly kind of a love triangle, triangle, but I can't say anything more than that without giving anything away. Um, it's incredible. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. It is so heartbreaking and sad at the same time though. So just go into it knowing that it is definitely heartbreaking. I cried at the end, but also was like, mm. Yes. Okay. You go girl. Um, so smash, smash, smash. It is worth the hype 1000%. But if you're reading it and you're like, oh my God, this is a little bit slow. Just keep going. I promise you it is a thousand percent worth it. Thank you, Melissa, for suggesting this because I feel like I have to talk about this at some point because the recommendations that come through for this are constant and I just need to put this out there. So she put Verity by Colleen Hoover and you guys like hard pass, hard pass. I have read Verity and I compare this experience to like seeing a car accident on the side of the road. Like you can't help but noodle neck it and like, okay, I read one, but the entire time like, it wasn't really enjoyable. I was uncomfortable. I thought the twist was extremely obvious and just was like, what the frick the entire time? Like, what am I reading? And just everything that happens in that book, like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So you have that. That's my thoughts on Verity. So hard pass on that. But also just hard pass on Colleen Hoover as as an author. She's just not for me. I know she is so hyped up everywhere. But one, like I said, romance, not really my thing. I don't really enjoy it. Two, I know a lot of her books, or at least a few of them, take a paranormal weird twist. And that's not my thing in books. I don't mind if it's like an obvious thing that's gonna happen. Like I'm reading a ghost story or a paranormal or a horror, but I don't like when shit like that comes out of nowhere. It's just not my thing. Um, and I just, no, just absolutely not. None of it like really appeals to me. And again, it's nothing against her as an author. I'm sure her writing is, you know, people love it. I understand it's, it has an audience and that is perfectly fine. If you love her books, I love that for you. She is just not for me. That whole genre, that whole situation, it's just not my thing. So 
I'm not gonna say never say never, but hard pass. Hard, hard, hard pass. Now that we have that out in the open, let's move on. <laughs> Um, the next suggestion is the hate you give. And I, I'm gonna say smash because I have heard really good things about this. I forget what it's about right now. So let's go to um, Goodreads for this by Angie Thomas. I know it's part of a series as well. And let's see moves between two worlds, poor neighborhood, where she lives. Um, yeah, smash. I have no reason why I wouldn't enjoy a book like this. I think it meant to hit on some hard topics, open up a lot of discussions, while also being a really powerful story. So 100% smash. I haven't read it yet. It is still on my want to read. You're not gonna be able to see it. It's still on my want to read list on Goodreads. And I've heard nothing but good things. So someday it will happen. I will dive into this series. Um, from what I've heard, it is incredibly well done and it is 100% worth the hype. So if you're thinking about it, definitely do so. Like I said, I can't give you like my star recommendation because I haven't read it yet, but I don't see any reason why not to pick this up. All right, and my last suggestions are all from one of my book besties, Cherie. Thank you so much for all of these, appreciate you. Um, the first one is Caraval, and this is 100% smash. I love a carnival story, um, and I love faint scenes. So there is, I don't know, like I won't lie, I have just heard about this series recently, and one of the covers are stunning, absolutely stunning. I love it so much. Um, they have a 4.0, or, or at least the first one does, on Goodreads, which is a great sign. That's a pretty high rating on Goodreads. And yeah, I mean, competition, romance, like I said, I don't mind if it's like intertwined to a story. You have a sister uh, relationship, which is cool, like that, and something about arranged marriages too, which is always interesting to read about. Um, but yeah, I 100% have no reason why I wouldn't like this. I didn't really enjoy the night circus that much, but it still like won't stop me from picking up stories like that. So definitely smash on that one. Ooh, okay, this one's absolutely smash as well. And that's Babel, Babel, Babel. The author says it Babel, so that's what I'm going with, although I know people say Babel, whatever. Um, but Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is one of like my most highly anticipated books for the end of this year. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it by the end of the year. I like to think so, but I am so looking forward to this one. It's a dark academia fantasy and just and also I've heard incredible like friendship story and also just a story about language in general which just sounds really cool so 100% smash on this one I cannot wait I'm worried that a little bit or a lot of it is gonna go over my head because like I said sometimes I feel like books like that can get a little bit confusing and where I'm so I didn't go to college or anything like that so I don't really have that like experience to compare it to or to like talk about academia in a way so I am nervous about that but from what I have heard from people who have read it and especially people who have really enjoyed it say that it is done so well that even if some of it goes over your head, you'll be able to grasp most of it. So yes, 100% smash. I could go on forever about that book. I'm really looking forward to it. Plus the cover is stunning. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. Both of them actually. Sometimes different countries versions can be like one's better than the other, but both the US and the UK version are amazing and we love to see it. The next one that she suggested was Gideon the Ninth, which I actually have never heard of before. So let's do a deep dive on that one. Gideon the Ninth. So it's part of a series. It is from Tamsin Muir. 
so sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. So this is, looks like it's the Locked Tomb series. Cover is terrifying, but really cool at the same time. 4.23 on Goodreads, which is an incredible rating. Um, let's see here. The Emperor needs necromancers. The ninth necromancer needs a swordsman. Gideon has a sword. Some dirty magazines? Okay, sir. Go you. Uh, and no more time for undead bullshit. This is in synopsis. Brought up by unfriendly, ossifying nuns, ancient retainers, and countless skeletons, Gideon is ready to abandon a life of servitude and an afterlife as a in an afterlife as a reanimated corpse. What? She packs up her sword. Oh, she's a female! That's even better. I thought Gideon... That's rude of me, but, like, I just assumed. Even cooler that her name is Gideon. Excuse me? Also, Criminal Minds, Gideon? What? I think that's probably where my mind went. So sorry. Anyways, she packs up her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazines. Absolutely, bring those with you. Um, <laughs> and prepares to launch her daring escape, but her childhood nemesis won't set her free without a service. I mean, like, smash, I think. Like, why not? I would be interested in checking out the first in the series, which is Gideon the Ninth. Um, it sounds like she's badass. She likes her dirty magazines, so, like, why not? Um, and there's also, like, a competition happening here. So, and also, like, the cover is so cool. There's, like, so many skeletons and corpses going on that, like, there's a lot of dead shit happening. And that, like, why not? Absolutely. So, let's see what other people... Mixed reviews from people that I follow. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. I always am up down to, like, give a book a chance if it's something that I think I'm remotely interested in. Depend even though, like, some people that I follow might not have liked it. Because everyone has their own opinions. Just look at Colleen Hoover, shall we? Um, so, smash. Smash. Gideon the Ninth. Actually, I'm gonna want to read right now. Putting it on the shelf. There's only a couple left. The Cotton Candy Massacre by Christopher Robertson. Again, not heard of it. I love this. This is why I did this also, is to like get recommendations. Oh, okay, that cover is terrifying. Mm -mm. It looks like there's a carnival or something happening, but there's a really creepy girl clown on the front and like, I don't do clowns. I'm terrified of clowns. Let's see. I know this is a horror, obviously. You can't not with that. Why? Read more. I want to read more of the synopsis. I don't know if I want to read this book yet. The book you are about to read is an account of the tragedy that occurred at the reopening of Bonkin's Bonanza one day in the summer of 1989. Okay. I do like books that are set in the 80s. Some came looking for fun, like Candy Barton and her best friend Lee. Others like Rocky Rhodes and Sully Sullivan. Came looking for a second chance. Instead, they would find a twisted, funfetti nightmare. Oh my god. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say smash with like a hint of hesitation. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna say smash. Put it on the lawn to read. Uh, the cover creeps me out like severely but the plot sounds cool it sounds interesting we have this bonanza happening there's a mystery it sounds like it's gonna be a bit scary so and it's set in the 80s so yeah smash maybe next halloween <laughs> And the last suggestion is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas in this that series. And I am going to say Smash. I am interested to read the first book in the series and see how I feel. Um, I know that some of her series are very romance heavy. And I mean, Akatar is, but some of the books are not. So I'm I'm interested to check it out and see how heavy it is. I really like her writing. I really like how fast paced her books are, um, even though some of them are really long. I really enjoy that. And I think that her writing is really gorgeous. So I'm gonna say 
smash. I almost just said pass, but I meant smash. <laughs> I'm gonna say smash on Throne of Glass. I definitely want to read more from her. What was the other series that she has? Now, Crescent City, that's the other one that I was thinking of. So anyways, smash, smash. I'm definitely curious. I will read the first book, see how I feel, and then go from there. There are a lot in that series, I believe. So we'll just have to see how that unfolds. And that is the last one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's something a little bit different. If you guys want me to do a part two of this, if you enjoyed it, definitely let me know by leaving a comment. And please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help small creators like myself. Subscribe if you are not already. Turn on the bell so you never miss a video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. You and I, the few.